Welcome to a new Key Smash Studios tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to make a UI in Photoshop that you can then export into a game engine. So we're going to make this UI and then we're going to talk about how to export it. So let's start off by making a new document and we'll make one 2560 by 1440. This is 16 by 9 1440 resolution. It's just the resolution of my computer monitor so that's what I'm using. We're going to unlock the background. Once we've unlocked the background, we'll create a new layer. And in that layer, we're going to use our marquee tool just to select the square. And we're going to select that. We will use our pencil tool to fill that in with a color. Once we've done that, we'll come up here to our move tool. You can either hit V or select. And then we're going to hit edit, transform, perspective. Then I'm going to slide this out till it's at 35. You can either do this by hand or come up here and manually do 35 yourself. I'm going to hit OK. And really quickly, I'm going to copy that, paste it. And then I'm going to move the top one until the bottom part comes apart. So we see this gap down here. And I'm going to move it back together till it just barely disappears. Once I've done that, I'll select my top layer, go back onto my bottom layer of the original button, and I'm going to hit delete. After I've done that, I can deselect and get rid of the old layer. I don't need it anymore. I have this large button, which I can now scale down to the appropriate size and move around as I'd like. I'm going to hit view, new guide. And I'm going to set up a 10% vertical guide. This is going to be my baseline for where I'm placing the buttons. So if I'm assuming I'm leaving enough room for a title to come across the top here, I'm going to create my first button here. The next thing I'm going to do is label this as standard button. And I'm going to copy this and paste it. I'm going to make it go out past the original standard button and I'm going to select the information from the original button plus the standard button so I have the whole length of it and I'm just going to paint over where the standard button was. So now I have a longer button that will act as a mouse hover button. Now that I've done that I'm going to switch the opacity of our standard button to 45. We go ahead and hit enter, then I'm going to double click on the layer outside of the name. This is going to open up the layer style window, and I'm going to put a bevel emboss. And in that, I'm going to have the depth of 75%, a size of 12 pixels. I'm actually going to up that up to 24 since we're on 1440. And then I'm going to go down to inner glow. Just like before, I'm going to set the size to 24 pixels because we're on 1440. Additionally, I'm going to come down to Gradient Overlay and apply a Gradient Overlay at opacity 66% with this gradient. I'm going to set the angle to 90 degrees and hit OK. So now we have a button that exists on our main screen. We also have a hover button which looks different. So I'm going to go ahead and make this the appropriate size. I'm going to set the opacity of this to 62%. I'm also going to edit the layer styles on this. And because I want it to be different, I'm going to select the same bevel and emboss with the same, same information as before, the same inner glow with the same information as before. But rather than doing a gradient overlay, I'm going to select an inner shadow and do a lesser form of that gradient overlay. I'm going to switch that opacity to 25%. And we can see that when I have our buttons and compare them, they are slightly different. And this is just so that when we are on our menu in our game engine and we hover over it, we have this secondary layer to pop out and show that this is our highlighted option. I'm going to select both of these layers and hit control J to copy them. While this is not strictly necessary, 
I personally like to get a feel of how the UI will look in Photoshop before I export it into a game engine. So I'm going to do this twice more where I copy the layer and place it. You'll notice that I've aligned all of them the same distance apart and they're all aligned with our 10% vertical guide. I now have copies of every single layer both the standard and the highlighted buttons. I'm going to hide all of the highlighted buttons and just work with the standard buttons for now. This is what it will look like with a base background. I'm going to paste in a background that I made in a previous project. If you'd like to know how to make a nebula there are tons of guides on YouTube and potentially if there's enough interest I will go over how to make one. But this is a Photoshop nebula that I made for a previous project and I'm just pasting it in here so we can see how this might look. You can put a, a planet spinning in the side or something of the sort. But we have this clear UI with unique buttons that look like buttons. When you drop them onto a button in Unity or in Unreal, they'll actually act like buttons. When you depress them, the bevel will go the other way. So they'll look like buttons. And additionally, we also have highlighted buttons. So when my mouse comes over, I hover over it. We have a different button that highlights and sticks out. So we know that this is the active one. We're going to talk about how to export these now. I've hid everything but one button and one hover button in our background. So what we're going to do now is hit File, Export, Layers to Files. Now I'm just going to select my desktop for right now and we're going to export all of these things with the with a prefix. So this is going to be our base thing. So space underscore UI is going to be our prefix and it's going to go 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. And for the file type we're going to select PNG24 and we're going to make sure that we have checked our transparency and then we're going to hit run. Now that we've exported, we can see that we have our space UI. This is our background. And we also have our base images here. If you have any questions on how this works, or any questions on Photoshop in general, please comment down below. I'm more than happy to help. You'll be able to find our Discord in the in the description below. Please take a look at that. We're always around. Join us, have a good time, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And hopefully we'll see you next week.